Oh man, I love Troll 2. And I also love Alice Cooper. Now all I have to do is walk down this hallway like a normal human being without falling over. Oof. Oh man, I got Alice Cooper all over my Troll 2. Today's episode, Monster Dog. Hello Internet, I'm called Matt, and welcome back to the month of Metalween, where metal music and campy horror collide. And today we've got one of the biggest names in heavy metal, Alice Cooper. Welcome to my breakdown. Okay, okay, Alice Cooper wasn't heavy metal. Alice Cooper was shock rock, which is a very important step on the path to heavy metal, but, uh, things got heavier. Nonetheless, Alice has had quite a film career portraying Freddy Krueger's father in Freddy's Dead, a zombie hobo in Prince of Darkness from Halloween director John Carpenter, and even wrote a song for Friday the 13th Part 6. Gee, I wonder why I would have those franchises on my mind. But it took the mind behind Troll 2 to give Alice a starring role in the 1984 film Monster Dog. Yes, Claudio Fragoso, who wrote and directed Monster Dog under the name Clyde Anderson, also directed Troll 2 under the name Drake Floyd. To be fair, if I directed movies like he did, I'd change my name a lot too. Along with Alice Cooper, this movie also stars a bunch of D-list Spanish actors. So, um, let's make fun of the box! Who designed this cover? Salvador Dali's lobotomized half-brother? And it doesn't get any better on the back. Have you ever even heard the words graphic design said out loud before? Alice Cooper stars as Lou. Lou? His character's name is Vincent! They said it clearly in the movie several times, it's on a banner even! It's also 84 minutes, not 88 minutes, but that's neither here nor there. This may actually be the worst DVD case I've ever seen, and that includes the case for the next movie I'm reviewing. So I'd like to welcome you to my nightmare, Monster Dog. No, hold on, I swear there was a movie in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. So the movie starts with basically the lamest Alice Cooper music video you've ever seen. And I hope you enjoyed actually hearing Alice Cooper's voice because he's dubbed for the rest of the movie. If we get there, we can take it, experiment, play around, till we come up with something original. Mmm, sounds just like him. What do you say, Vince? Not bad, huh? Not bad. It stinks. It stinks. Alice plays Vincent Raven, a rock star. Yeah, quite a stretch there. Vincent and his friends are going out to visit his uncle's creepy mansion for the weekend to shoot a video. What could possibly go wrong? Then we cut to Geppetto making sandwiches. He hears a noise outside and finds... Puppies! Vincent gets stopped by local police and explains he used to live here. Sheriff Morrison. Yeah, I remember. I used to sit on your lap and piss all over your pants, right? <laughs> yeah, eighth grade was a weird time. The police warn about a pack of mad dogs killing people and send them on their way. What was all that about your father? Okay. If you don't want to talk about it, it's all the same to me. 
I'd rather not talk about it. A little slow on the uptake there, eh, Vince? But an ominous man in bloody clothes shows up and is ominous. The wind is lifting the fog. Were the ominous police warnings not spooky enough? He runs off into the woods, so Vince and his girlfriend Sandra go after him in hopes of taking him to the hospital. But they get scared off by some dogs. They arrive at his uncle's house to find his uncle isn't there. And there's a spooky full moon. I'm sorry, but outside of movies where the full moon gives the monster their power, full moons just really aren't that spooky. In real life, it'd be much scarier to be caught under a new moon, because then everything would be pitch black and hard to see. The full moon is really just there for the audience. Anyway, Vincent's idea to deal with his uncle not being there is to grab and load a shotgun within five minutes of arrival. But hey, they found sandwiches. Wowie! What have you found? Another tray! The director of Troll 2 and the godfather of Shock Rock collaborated on a movie where someone says the word Wowie. Now this is pod racing. Then they go to sleep and enter my nightmare. Reused footage! You will all die. You're going to die too. Fucking spoilers, dude. Then Blondie, I'm not gonna bother learning her real name, gets attacked by some bleeding guys. Zombies. Murder victims? Who knows? <laughs> Again, fucking spoilers. She tries to attack the old man, but he's gone. Oh, never mind, there he is. She gets attacked by a dog man and wakes up to reveal it was all a dream. But I mean, she had the word dream on her shirt. They kind of spelled it out for us. She explains the dreams to her friends who laugh it off, except Vincent who makes this face. But I guess it scared Sandra and Vincent enough that they can't sleep. Werewolves. Myths, legends, and scientific realities. Just what exactly are the scientific realities? They don't exist. No, seriously, Vince believes in werewolves. Listen, werewolves do exist. Oh, bullshit, Vince. The year 2000 is just around the corner. Um, if by right around the corner you mean 26 years into the future... But Vince relays a story about how a pack of wild dogs used to wander the streets and the village people, believing his father was a werewolf, killed him. Which, uh, would really make me not believe in werewolves. I really don't see the point in this story. And then they make out. Yeah, skip to the part where people die. Eh, no such luck. We gotta see Sandra stop to examine a painting when... I, I thought it was bad on the box, but oh, wow, that is bad. Then I guess they filmed Vincent's new video outside, not in the spooky mansion? Oh, wait, now it is in the spooky mansion. What? Now this is an Alice Cooper video. And then the dead body of the caretaker falls through a window. Which I totally thought was just part of the music video. Then Blondie sees the old man again. Why? Why does she have the visions and not, I don't know, the main character's girlfriend who's a much more established character at this point? That thing we saw out there was an animal of some kind. Not a man. I'm going outside to look for her. You stay here and barricade yourselves in. What if you don't find her? If I'm not back by sundown, leave without me. Kinda hate to say this, but shouldn't the rock star who makes millions of dollars stay and send one of the more expendable crew members? Well, only if you swear not to take any risks, okay? Yeah, wouldn't want you doing anything dangerous while hunting werewolves. And then the phone line gets cut by... this guy. Um, 
Who? I seriously have no idea who this character is. Is he evil? Does he work for the dogs? Has he appeared at all in this movie? Okay, he's with a crew of villagers who, again, we've never met, who I think want to kill Vincent? I'm also pretty sure this guy went on to be a South Park character. Yeah, that one. Ned, I believe. They show up at the mansion after Vince has left and try to come in. I can't wait to see him again. If you invite me in, maybe we can wait for him together. Weird that you would specify inviting you in. Almost like you're a vampire! Or just a really stupid character. Come on in. Fucking dumbass. Oh, would you look at that? These weren't trustworthy people. What the hell are you talking about? <sighs> I've definitely seen worse dubbing, but... Every now and then, the cracks just really shine through. When Vince gets back, I'm gonna shoot him right through the heart with this silver bullet. That's how you kill werewolves. Ah, no sweat then. Vince isn't really a werewolf, so that shouldn't kill him. Have you seen the dogs too? It's him who commands them. Controls them. So, like, werewolves are just, like, the dog version of mermaids? But their plan backfires and they shoot Blondie. Kill him. Haha! -ha, the werewolf will never kill you! Now hold still while I kill you! Jeez, Ned sure takes his sweet time getting around to killing these kids. You look like a couple of queers to me. Queers make. My stomach turned! He seriously wastes so much time being homophobic that they managed to overtake him. Sure is fortunate everyone in this movie's a dumbass. No, Sandra. We're not murderers. Yeah, we're not murderers. Let them live. Just kidding, Vince just shot one of them. And then the dogs show up. And man, apart from that German Shepherd, who keeps happily wagging his tail, none of these dogs look very threatening. Although again, everyone is stupid and Ned attacks one with a lantern and manages to catch himself on fire. It's just not Metal Ween until we've seen two movies where people catch fire. But he follows the simple safety instructions, stop, drop, and roll. Er, I mean, run around, jump out a window, and die. That's the safe thing to do. And then there's a werewolf? So werewolves... exist. Okay. The werewolf kills everyone except Sandra and some other girl, and Vincent shows back up. Sandra wants to get out of there, but the other girl is convinced Vincent is the werewolf. And the dogs have suddenly calmed down. And there's no proof that the werewolf is dead. Hey Sandra, hate to say it, but I think your boyfriend is a werewolf. I mean, the evidence is piling up against him, and that's not a risk I would take. But they load up and drive off anyway. I guess their adventure is over. Wait, why is there 10 minutes left in the runtime? Very new. Oh hey, I guess Vince isn't a werewolf. That's nice. Sandra jumps out and Vincent wrecks the car. And then I guess he is the werewolf? I I'm super confused. And then she just shoots him, and that's the end of the movie. But a logical ending might be a bit much to ask. So, clearly this movie wasn't very good, but, uh, did it do anyone any good? Surprisingly, yes. Alice Cooper was a chronic alcoholic until 1983 when he decided to go sober. He agreed to work on the film because he knew it would require him to stay sober during the production of the film with the understanding that the film would likely never be shown outside of Spain. Of course, Cooper had a lucrative acting career outside of this, with his aforementioned cameos in Prince of Darkness and Freddy's Dead, as well as the greatest cameo of all time in Wayne's World. Also an episode of The Muppet Show where Gonzo almost sells his soul to the devil and only doesn't because he can't find a working pin. This is a real episode. This is Muppets canon. Put that one in the history books right next to the one where we find out Luke Skywalker is Mark Hamill's cousin. Cause that happened too. In an interview for the book Heavy Metal Movies by Mike McPadden, Cooper said of the film, Monster Dog is exactly the type of movie I'd rent. 
It's exactly crappy enough and stupid enough for me to really like it. Unfortunately, not everyone involved was so loving. One cameraman stopped during filming to load more film into the camera, and director Claudio Fragoso chased him around with one of the prop shotguns, resulting in him receiving the nickname El Director Loco. Monster Dog as a movie is pretty cliché and poorly made. Not that it's wholly uninteresting, it's just a totally typical grindhouse horror film. It's not must-see balls-to-the-walls insanity, but if you come across it for cheap, it may be worth checking out with some friends. We got one more glorious movie for Metal Ween, so until then, keep the party pumping. Because it might not come out till early November. But, just keep headbanging until then. And you killed everybody. Everybody except me. I call that discrimination. Right on. Yeah. Vince, you can't play favorites with friends. Either you wipe out everybody, or no one. I said keep headbanging till November!